running is a sport that really makes you push yourself, which is probably my favorite part about the sport, just the fact that you're competing with yourself every day and can't necessarily make excuses. You kind of just have to get out there and do it, which really appeals to me, which not everyone likes because it's kind of brutal, but I think that's, it means pushing myself with people around me that I care about and care about me just pushing each other together. Oh, running means so much. Probably growth and community. I've grown up through the sport the last 15 years. It's shaped me into who I am and so many of my best friends are because of track and cross country that I frankly, yeah, don't know who I would be without it. Oh, running means everything to me. I've been running since the age of 11. I'm now almost 50 years old and I just feel that it is, it represents freedom and and thought and joy and really it's the time of day that I get to give to myself, ask and receive whatever it is I need that day. So whether it's putting a mental to-do list into my mind or solving a problem or chasing a goal, running is always there for me. Um, running is healthy, it's productive, um, it's time to think and to chat. I love the socialization that I get out of running with my team and my family. Um, and most importantly, it's something that and being involved in running is, is making the world a better place. So, love it, love my job. Freedom, kind of the opportunity to get out enjoy nature, be with yourself or be with others. It's uh, something I don't think I could live without, so I really enjoy it. Uh, running means to me that that you never, uh, it just keeps you going. It keep, for me personally, it just means that to, uh, to get out of the home, you know, to just do something, you know, because it, it, uh, it gets, it gives you a passion, it gives you something to do. It just makes you feel better even though when things aren't. At least it's something to look forward to. Even though I might not be the fastest or the slowest, but I will guarantee I will be the strongest. That's another thing, you don't ever quit. Because I've been in this for six years and I'm still, I mean, I'm still standing, so that's all I can say. As the school year came to an end, the cross-country team began training and adding more miles to their runs each week. We ran trails and hills and very long runs to help build a base by the start of the season. Running at sea level around the track and some of the trails near the school is one thing. If we wanted to boost performance, we would have to train at high altitude in an oxygen-deprived environment with steep trails and rocks. As athletes acclimate to high altitude, they acquire more red blood cells, which allows their blood to carry more oxygen. When they compete at lower altitudes, they get a natural boost to the muscles when additional oxygen is available. This blood expanding effect can enhance performance in athletes. It can be the difference between missing the final cut for CIF and earning the gold. But where will we where would we train? Fortunately, living in California, we are blessed with having a variety of locations to train in. 
We have deserts, beaches, and mountains. We have the highest peaks in the continental United States, with Mount Whitney being the highest peak at 14,505 feet. So, Athletic Director Brian Shapiro said, Boys, girls, <clears throat> we're going on a road trip. Brian Shapiro, Coach Kevin Farrington, and I commandeered three white vans, loaded them up, and hit the road on a 333-mile journey to Mammoth Lakes. We hit the road and blazed across the Mojave Desert on Highway 395. It must have been 500 degrees out there. It was so hot that a water buffalo evaporated at the local zoo. Fonzie was working on a mathematical theorem here. It was the Malaga Cove Track Club's long-awaited summer trip and the open roads beckon. We only made one stop at Subway to get some lunch. We didn't want to make any more stops because if you bought a chocolate bar, it was given to you in a cup as hot chocolate. So we just kept the pedal to the metal through the desert. And we caught up to Shapiro's van. Say hello to the folks back home, Brian. That a baby. The vans were very comfortable inside with strong air conditioning and a fairly smooth ride. Matias was trying to convince us all that high sugar drinks give him superpowers. Sure, whatever you say, Matias. Altitude sickness. Now altitude sickness can hit you at even 8,000 feet. Given time, your body can adapt to the oxygen deprivation and the molecules at these higher altitudes. They call this acclimation. Now here's a few ways to avoid altitude sickness. One, eat a lot of carbs. It's not often we are told to eat a lot of carbohydrates. Two, avoid alcohol. Three, Drink a lot of water. Four, take it easy. And five, don't go to the mountains. Another way to acclimate quickly is to drink a lot of water before driving up to these higher altitudes and hit the trails right away. And that's exactly what we did. We wasted no time in hitting the trails that are on 8,000 feet. We did a five mile run beginning at the Sherwin Lakes Trailhead and then around the meadow. And boy, did we work up an appetite. We called our friends Benny and Adolfo at Latin Food Market in Mammoth Lakes to see if they could fix a nice dinner for the team. They showed up in their taco truck and prepared a fabulous dinner consisting of tacos with chicken, pork, cheese, beef, and even veggie tacos. We feasted on the delicious food just like the Californios that came long before us that helped feed the gold prospectors in that same area during the gold rush. It had been a long day. Everyone was hungry and tired. We all look forward to a good night's sleep. Benny's a nice man. If you ever need a smile, he will lend you his.
Sleeping at over 8,000 feet under the Milky Way, thoughts went through our minds of what awaited us for the next day. What's it like to run through the silence of the forest? Have you listened to your soul in this silence? Tomorrow we will know, and we will venture into the silent places. We will know what luck awaits us. We will run on lonely trails we yet do not know. There is a whisper in the night wind. The stars are a gleam to guide us. And the trails are calling, calling, calling. And we must go. They say that the probability of being born is one in 400 trillion. I'm a living, breathing miracle. Every second here on earth is a gift, and I will never let it slip away. Each day that I'm alive, I will be better than the day I was before. When life gets hard, I will work harder. I don't make excuses. I face my challenges head on, and I conquer them. I refuse to be average. The world may try to keep me down, but I will prevail. The faith I have in myself exceeds all else. I will never be outworked, outhustled, or outsmarted. If you run eight miles, I will run 10. If you run up a mountain, I will run up two mountains. I will win or I will die. That is who I am. I have never come across an obstacle that's insurmountable. The world does not provide barriers. It provides unlimited opportunity. If I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will be better because of it. Telling me something can't be done only further ignites my desire to succeed. I know the trails less traveled are difficult, but diverting from them was never an option. The only person responsible for my success is me. In my final moments, looking back on my life, I will have no regrets. I will have left no stone unturned. The sacrifices made, the blood, sweat, the tears, and the countless hours put into my craft will not have been in vain. This is what makes a champion. This is who I am. couldn't do that. Could you do that? How can they do that? Who are those guys? Later that afternoon, we went to Shady Rest Park. Milo the Miler brought his skateboard and helmet. He found some nice concrete humps and decided to dazzle everyone. Whee! We played volleyball and relaxed. Runners deserve a little fun too. The girls were supposed to be doing strides but instead decided to walk. Coach Kevin walked up and said, Ladies, there's no walking in cross country. So the girl said, Okay, we won't walk. We'll skip.
We went up to Horseshoe Lake and Lake Mary. That's about 8,975 feet in elevation and ran five to six miles. There's a lot of beautiful wildlife if you really look. We have marmots, mountain lions, black bears, coyotes, and even eagles. And just like us, they are all flawed infinitesimal creatures of the great universe. It's important to break away once in a while and wash away your spirit. In nature, you are given the strength to heal in body and soul. In nature, you find hope for this world. Cross country runners, yeah, they got it right. We are bipedal creatures and have been so for six million years. We live in ancient bodies that were designed to travel great distances. Not long ago, when we were hunters, we would have to travel long distances to hunt and kill a deer. Then we would have to carry it back. The human body can do mind-blowing things. Since humans no longer have to hunt for their food, they have become sedentary. In doing so, it has created many ailments that plague the human body today. Running also releases serotonin which plays a key role in your happiness in such functions as sleep, digestion, wound healing, and bone health. Look, Ma, I'm running inside a volcano. The Horseshoe Lake area is actually a dormant volcanic caldera. It last erupted about 50,000 years ago. Carbon dioxide gases from the magma deep in the earth still seep through the fault and into the soil which suffocated the trees in the area. The water levels from Horseshoe Lake also drop as the water seeps down into the fault. Being in Mammoth is a real treat. You get to see beautiful things like these bears along the river and other... Hey, what is that guy doing there? No, no, don't! Get away from the bears! Get away from the bear! Oh my gosh! Oh no, this is really bad. Oh! Like, what is going- Oh, that hurt. So Jeff, what does running mean to you? Uh, running is everything. It's a vocation, avocation, hobby, um, lifestyle. Fitness, philosophy, fun, way to meet people, uh, and the one, th the best fountain of youth that I know. It's important for a team not to sit around idle for a long time with nothing to do. That's boring. No camp is a camp without a little folklore and adventure. So we have ways of stirring things up. If you want to try a fun social experiment with teenagers, tell them about a treacherous cliff that drops down to the lake called a precipice of death. Then watch how quickly they get up and say, let's go take a look. We hike through the forest, past bears, mountain lions, snakes, crazy lumberjacks, and Bigfoot, just to see the precipice of death. The boys at the cliff said, nah, I kind of like it up here. Besides, the water's cold. One of the girls said, Get out of my way, you fraidy cats. I'll show you how it's done. The old guy in the canoe was yelling, Don't let him jump! I'll call Child Protective Services! You'll get the electric chair! 
We smiled and waved back. Hey, little fella. Running means, I like running because of the community. Um, everyone in that community wants to get out and run no matter how old or slow they are. Um, the fact that everyone wants to do the same thing just means a lot to me. Well, it, it really means a lot. It's an outlet for me to like ex express myself and it's really become a big part of my life. My, my dad was a runner and my brother was a runner so over the years, it's really come to mean a lot to me. Um, not only is it like an outlet for me to express myself, but it's an outlet for me to like express myself as like a competitor, if that makes sense as well, because I just I love competing. After you have run up a mountain, which you figured could not be conquered, you begin to realize that all of your limits are self-imposed. We started up the mountain at 7.30 a.m. The burning sensation in the legs is felt almost right away from the lactic acid. You are gasping for air as you keep your eyes on a narrow trail. The trail can be treacherous with trip hazards such as rocks and roots. mind will lie to you. It will tell you, you can't do this today. That it's too hard. That it's dusty. You're tired. Your legs hurt. This is where you meet your best friend and your worst enemy. You. And you must deal with yourself and tell the mind to shut up. You are in charge. Try navigating through the boulders at this speed as Jake Tipowitz is doing so finely. Then try it with a camera. We descended into a valley and the downhill was a huge relief. But then you look across the valley and you realize you still have a huge mountain to climb. You know you can change course and go back down. You know you can stop. But there's something better at the top of the mountain and you know it's worth the fight. Matthew Farnsworth really did a show for everyone. He was the first guy up the top of the mountain. Michelle Nickmar, you see her sitting there in the front in the purple. She was the first girl up the top of the mountain. They were moving. We only had one casualty and that was Brett. But here she is, all smiles. Who are those guys? After a long run, we were served up a delicious breakfast by Kathy Hernandez, Boo Wang, and Christine Sherry. It was wonderful. And we got showered up and we headed up to Mammoth Lake's pack outfit. We walked up to the front desk and asked the gentleman there, do you have any horses? He goes, yeah, we have this really nice one right here. I said, oh, that's a really nice horse. Great. Can you get us 47 horses? The guy said, 47 horses? Are you crazy? I am crazy. The nice thing about being crazy is you never have to explain anything to anyone. Can you get us 47 horses? Oh boy.
Before we went horseback riding, we went over a few things that we should not do. This concludes this lesson. Let's ride. There is a lonely road. It's called the Green Church Road. It is called this because there's a little lonesome green church on it. It's a very desolate road. Most of it's unpaved and goes all the way to the Nevada state line and beyond. You better have a full tank of gas if you decide to travel this road. There is nothing out there. Say hello to the folks, Brian and Rebecca. We ran several miles doing tempo runs on this isolated road. It's a great road because there are no cars. Dina Castor, the famous Olympian marathoner, coaches on this road with her runners. 
tempo runs improve endurance and speed because they condition the body to better process fuel for energy. We moved on to the track adjacent to the road that is used by Olympians and did some speed work. The women's San Diego State University team was also there doing speed work. Lindsey Flanagan, another great American distance runner, was also there working on interval training and preparing for a marathon. Mike Mackowitz shows them how it's done. With every step, the body adapts to the altitude and becomes more efficient in delivering oxygen to the body. The team finished with core work to strengthen the midsection. After that grueling workout, we decided to go for a swim in June Lake. But then we got hit by a storm and we're all kind of trapped inside the van and sort of changed our plans. The team decided to make the best of it. They said, let's go out and play volleyball in the rain, which they did. It was early in the morning. The sun had not come over the mountains yet as we began our ascent to the rocky cathedrals that touched the sky up in the minarets. We ran single file along these narrow trails along the San Joaquin River. One group ran to Shadow Lake, which is eight miles round trip. Another group ran to Lake Adiza, which is 13.1 miles round trip. That's a half marathon, except it was running up a mountain. The last group did the grueling run to Iceberg Lake. That's 15 miles round trip. As the group spread out, you're just left with you. You and your thoughts. And those thoughts better be good because those thoughts are what's gonna carry you through this mountain. I came across a lady backpacker at about 9,300 feet. And she said, are you guys, did you guys really run up this mountain? I said, yes, we did. And she said, you guys are superhuman. I don't know about that, but it does take a certain type of person to want to do this. A huge thunderstorm was brewing just on the other side of the minarets and 
we had to, you know, time was of the essence, so we had to move and get off that mountain before the storm hit us. Running teaches us determination, focus, and reminds us of our aspiration to go beyond our previous limitations. Running is both physically challenging, but at the same time gives you an inner joy. It cannot be explained, it can only be experienced. The storm hit just as we were leaving. It's coming down. You're beginning to get on my nerves. Who are those guys? The most desperate prison break in the history of the West occurred at the Nevada Penitentiary at Carson on the evening of Sunday, September 17, 1871. 29 convicts, murderers, train robbers, horse thieves, and others escape after killing one man and wounding half a dozen more. They went south and hid in a place called Diablo Lake, meaning the Devil's Lake. Four others were captured, eating roasted coyote. A posse was quickly formed and they gave chase and they went to Diablo Lake. An Indian by the name of Mono Jim was killed as well as Sheriff Morrison. The convicts had Henry rifles and those were superior to what most of the posse had. So more people were called in to help capture, capture these convicts. The convicts fled southeast towards Round Valley. Most gave up, others were shot. Two were hung outside an abandoned cabin. It is now called Convict Lake. People still see the ghosts of the convicts running around the lake. But this is where we chose to run for our last day at high altitude.
The air was filled with anticipation and electricity. Schools from all over came to race at Agony Hill. The training in Mammoth really worked. Here Zach pulls away from the crowd as he goes up Agony Hill. Alex Naejo won by so far and was so far ahead that people thought the race was over and began to walk out on the course and set up picnic tables. Here Michelle Nickmar, running in third place, sits just behind the leaders and waits patiently and lets them do all the work. Coming back down the mountain, Michelle was so far ahead she could have sat down and done her homework and still won. It's a lot of convincing myself that I can keep going and that I can keep pushing myself through even though my legs are hurting and I'm out of breath and I'm tired and all that. I just have to keep being persistent and make myself go faster, especially by the end. It's all about making yourself go faster even though you feel like you can't and your body's telling you you can't. Do you find that this mentality carries over into your schoolwork? Oh, definitely, yes. It's always trying to persevere, like for example, on, the, on a test, if there's a question I don't know, I will always come back to it and just keep trying and trying and reworking it, rethinking about it until I'll get it. Or even like on homeworks and on studying, like I just keep studying, I keep trying to review topics that I don't understand until I finally get it. That's the mentality of a champion. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Something inside of me goes back through the years And I'm a kid I used to know I'm flying Over my shoulder through the dust I'm calling Run word and catch me if you can On any Sunday I'm a flying with the ground I'm flying over my shoulder through the dust I'm calling run word and catch me if you can
dancing in the wind. I'd like to break the string and drift out of sight. I may not pass this way again. I'm flying over my shoulder through the dust. I'm calling, run word and catch me if you can. This is Frank Potts. Thank you for watching my film. Stay positive, and remember, if you need a smile, I will lend you mine. On any Sunday, chasing echoes of dreams, I touch a yesterday. Something inside of me goes back through the years, and I'm a kid I used to know. with the ground I'm flying over my shoulder through the dust I'm calling run word and catch me if you can on any Sunday I'm a flying bird free as the wind faster than time reason and rhyme are Tasting the sun, the feeling the earth, knowing my worth and free in my mind. On any Sunday, like the tail of a kite, flying and dancing in the wind, I'd like to break the string and drift out of sight. This way again, I'm flying over my shoulder through the dust. I'm calling, run word and catch me if you can. On any Sunday, I'm a flying man. This is Frank Ponce. Thank you for watching my film. Stay positive, and remember, if you need a smile, I will lend you mine. Special thanks go to Brian Shapiro, Kevin Farrington, Rebecca Mara, Bob Boardman, and Alex Broughton. The Ponce Real Estate Group and Coldwell Banker are proud supporters of Palos Verdes Cross Country and Track. We never stop moving.